What is up guys? This is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the Yup unofficial build. This is the YAP ROM based on Android 12. This is the 9th February 2022 build. This one includes the Enix camera version 204 right out of the box and this is a MIUI firmware based or MIUI vendor based ROM and if you don't know how to flash a custom ROM like this you can find the guide in the description or the cards. Again this ROM includes GAPS, it passes safety net right out of the box but this is an unofficial build which again includes the Anix camera. So this particular build I have been using for more than two days now. So let me start this video with the stock launcher. Well you get the launcher launcher by default over here let me actually show you as you can see and you can customize it thoroughly there are huge amount of customizations for this launcher as you can see there is the theme accent color etc and the adaptive icons and stuff and in the home screen you will find even more like the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen and stuff like that all those things are present we have the google feed and the status bar etc options icon size level size etc you can customize and even the dock you can customize you can apply accent color to the dock then we have the app drawer customization. You can even disable the suggestions if you don't like that. So yeah, lot of things, even the app drawer columns and stuff, you can customize from here. You can see there is the folders. Also, there is the recent customization. And over here, if you're noticing, you can customize the screenshots shared or even enable the other buttons if you want to. Right now, I have enabled the screenshot, then the lens and the clear all option. And everything works perfectly fine over here. Even the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen works perfectly great. As you are noticing, double tap to wake is again working fine. And even the fingerprint scanner speed, if I'm showing you, as you can see, it is working perfectly fine. The fingerprint scanner has 100% reliability in my frank opinion, and it works all the time, as you are noticing. The fingerprint scanner speed is very very fast, there is no issues with the fingerprint scanner unlocking. To the left of the home screen we of course find the Google's Discover page, this works fine and the scrolling even on the Google's Discover page is pretty smooth, 120Hz all the time, so no issues with that. And swiping down in the quick setting panel, we have the quick setting panel looking like this. You can even change this clock style on the top part of the quick setting panel if you're noticing. And we have this kind of toggles and these are the apps that I'm using which I'll show you the echo battery data and stuff. But right now, let me show you the quick setting panel. And here, this is how you can scroll. You can edit and add even more toggles that you want to add from here. You can see all the toggles that I have over here. But here I have added the dark theme, the screen recorder. Yes, you can record the device and the microphone audio at the same time with the screen recorder. We also have the always on display toggle and the do not disturb, etc. You can enable or disable from right here. And the notification, the peak notification, the Google Home controls, the nightlight, everything is present. But let me tell you, there is no FPS info or something like that. But yeah, the power menu you get like this. And if you tap on advanced, you do have the directly rebooting option to the recovery or fast boot from right here. Let me go back. We have the settings panel from this like button and this is how the settings panel looks like. Now let me show you the about section. Here is how the Android version section looks like. We have the Android version as Android 12 of course. We have the security patch of latest February 5th, 2022. So that is great. We have the stock kernel as the Vantom kernel and the YAP build over here it shows. It says 12 homemade for sweet 9th February 2022 build again. In the system panel, this is how it looks like. Yes, it has some interesting things like inside device specific settings. We have the high refresh rate option. You can change the refresh rate from here. The DC dimming is there and the ambient display or the Xiaomi doors you can enable from right here. We also have the thermal profiles over here. Yes, I have changed the thermal profiles to the benchmarking apps as you can see. The Android and stuff, you can set it to benchmark gaming or something like that. So yeah, I have used the benchmark profile for all the benchmarking apps that I'll show in this video. And we have the sound enhancer, the Mi Audio Direct is present. You can choose from these many presets. Yes, I have been using it with the Youth Edition. The sound quality for the headphone jack and Bluetooth as well is amazing. We also have the Hi-Fi Audio preset. And then we have the preset sounds over here. Lot of presets if you're noticing even the bass reduction and stuff is there so yeah lot of options are there for the sound and the sound quality via the headphone jack is great you also get this bluetooth battery icon if you're noticing right now i have connected this bluetooth device right here so as you can see you are seeing the bluetooth battery icon over there and if you are wondering about the codex let me actually show you we have this qualcomm aptx hd audio working fine and the sound quality via bluetooth again is amazing now let's talk about a few more things. We have the YAP updater from here. It shows some kind of update disabled because this is an unofficial build again. So I think the update checker may not work. So that's how it is. We also have the live translate feature if you want to use that. Then inside language and input, we have the Gboard as a default keyboard here. 
Now let me talk about the problems that I have faced in this ROM. Well, the Play Store of course shows as this Play Protection Certificate shows that device is certified, but still some apps downloaded from Play Store does not work like some government apps. Like the M41 app that I use is simply not working. Let me actually show you over here. So this particular app is not working. If I open it, as you can see, it just force closes right away. It doesn't open at all. So yeah, this is the problem I'm facing over here. This particular app, I have noticed I haven't like found any other app, but this one actually does not work at all. As you can see, it simply does not open. So yeah, this kind of problems you may face over here if you're using these kind of apps. But talking about banking apps and stuff, yes, banking apps are working perfectly fine. I have set up Google Pay and stuff, they are working perfectly fine. Even the SBI card app that I use is working perfectly fine. If you check safety net, yes, it passes right out of the box here. Also, the, the DRM info shows as L1, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos internetively without any issues. With this LED RGB remote app, I have tested the IR blaster of the device and that is working perfectly fine here, no issues with that. Now let's talk about the best feature according to me of this ROM is the camera. The ANX camera is working perfectly fine here. I haven't faced any kind of issues as you can see the front camera and stuff everything is working perfectly great. As you can see the picture quality over here is great no issues with that and even it takes the pictures properly. Let me actually go into the info. As you can see this is a 16 megapixel photo. So yeah everything with the camera is working perfectly fine. You can take portrait pictures and stuff. The 64 megapixel pictures as well are working great. Even in the photo mode you can zoom it in like this the 2x zoom and the ultra wide angle lens is also working fine. In the video settings you get the 4k 30 fps video if you want that or if you are switching to the front camera you get up to 1080p 30fps even in the pro mode you can shoot the pro manual video and that should be working super fine even the night mode and stuff the dual video everything is working great only one thing that i have noticed is that the slow motion is buggy if i switch the slow motion as you can see it shows this bloody kind of image but yeah it doesn't it gets stuck in the slow motion so that's how it is i can't even do anything right now so i have to close the camera and then reopen it I guess then it should work okay so right now it shows can't connect to camera I may have to reboot the device or something so as you can see right now the camera is back again working without rebooting but yeah this is how it is the slow motion except for slow motion everything is working fine even super macro lens is working great if you're noticing so yeah the super macro as well is working great except for slow motion again everything almost is working perfectly fine here no issues with the anx camera it is a really amazing thing that right now you can use anx camera right out of the box it is present even on the latest dark face rom which i'm going to try but even on the yap rom the anx camera is working flawlessly almost and it is an amazing experience on android 12 with anx camera now it's time for the customizations i guess so let's jump into this yasp settings and this is where you will find all the customizations of this ROM. If you go to the about, you will see the Yup logo right here. And we have the maintainer's name and stuff. You can donate to the developers from right here, I guess. Let me go back in themes. We have the Monet engine. And from here, you can have the colorfulness of the whole UI. Of course, if you know Monet theme engine from the wallpaper, it adapts to the color of the accent of the whole UI. So yeah, all the accent colors that you are noticing is from this wallpaper itself. So yeah, if you change the wallpaper, the accent color will change if you're using the Monet theme engine. Let me go back. You can even pick the clocks of the quick settings. So this is the clock I'm using. This is the custom clock one. You can also use the Oxygen OS or the Color OS ones if you want to. And even the headline and body fonts are there and you can actually see which fonts are which and plethora of fonts that you get over here. So no problem with that. Even the icon picker is there. Lot of icons are there. And if you're noticing the signal icons, again, a lot of icons are there. Even the Wi-Fi icon style, you can change from right here. Also the icon shapes, you can choose from right here. So yeah, you get amazing options for the icon shapes, or I would say the other customizations are plenty over here. So no problems with the customizations. In the status bar, we have the double tap to sleep, the network traffic display, combined signal icons, then the Vaulty icon. You can of course choose the Vaulty icon from a lot of these options. I've been using this Margarita of Vaulty icon, and we have the view Wi-Fi icon customizer, and we have the clock position changing option. You can put the clock to center left or right, but I don't know why you put the clock to the center because there is the camera itself and in the battery style we have the portrait circle text etc battery icons show percent you can enable show percent inside icon you can enable if you want that right now let me jump into the quick setting panel customization here we have the brightness slider we have the bottom brightness slider if you want to enable that and we have the battery estimates media player gaming macro you can also have for the quick settings let me go back from right here we have the gestures 
here we have the system navigation gestures but if you go here you don't actually find the length or the thickness customization for the pill bar but that's how it is it's fine and swipe your invoke assistant is working perfectly great as you're noticing hey google so as you can see the voice trigger with the google assistant is working perfectly fine no issues with that and we have this different section for the press and hold power button here we have the toggle torch option then we have the quickly open camera also the hold for assistant is there let me go back we have the one-handed mode so this is actually working perfectly fine and the playback control prevent ringing etc inside lock screen we have the always on display scheduling option if you want to schedule that we have the force small clock option then the lock screen charging info also shows up the double app to sleep on the lock screen is working perfectly fine the media art you can enable if you want to in the notifications we have the notification headers and the ambient edge lighting and the blink flashlight for incoming calls and the in-call vibration options are also there in the mix settings we have the advanced reboot and the swipe trick screenshot and for this swipe trick screenshot let me actually show you if i'm here and if i take a screenshot as you can see there is the capture mode feature so that is there but yes the delete option does not show up over here but that's how it is you can go into the edit then you can delete it from right here or you can edit it however you want to so that's it for the customization right now let's talk about the battery yes this is how the battery settings looks like you can see the full battery usage the battery saver is there the battery manager is there but no charging cycle kind of seeing option as of right now i have tested the battery thoroughly with the aku battery app and with this let me actually show you by scrolling down we are getting about nine hours plus screen on time over here. That is just amazing. And the battery life over here was amazing. But yes, I would say in my frank opinion, I have seen the battery a little bit more draining when compared to the Durfest OSS version, which I was on switching from the Durfest ROM to this ROM. I have seen the battery is a little bit more draining, but yeah, that's how I feel. But overall, the screen on time is great. You can definitely get eight plus hours of screen on time surely without any issues. Also, the fast charging is working great over here. The 33 watt fast charging is not a problem over here. And if I show you the battery health of the Aku battery app, right now it shows it's at 89%. So that's how it is. Inside sounds, we have the touch vibration, the screenshot sound, etc. disabling option. The vibratory intensity you can customize for everything. And the volume panel timeout is also there. The other things like the phone ringtone and stuff, you can change from the sound settings. In the display settings, this is how it looks like. We have the brightness level, the adaptive or auto brightness. Inside lock screen, we have the show lockdown option. Then the always show time and info is from the always on display. And we have the screen timeout right here. Of course, we have the dark theme enabling option. And with the dark theme, this is how it looks. And everything in the UI looks like this. So yeah, the dark theme is working great, but there is no separate pitch black option for the dark theme itself. So that's how it is. We have the font size, the display size, etc. Night light is also there. You can enable it. The night light is working fine. The colors, I have changed it to boosted, but let me tell you right out of the box, you may find the colors look a little bit dull. If you see that, just enable the boosted mode, then just enable the night light for once, then just disable the night light. It should be back to the normal or like the proper colors, I would say. So if the colors look dull, make sure you enable the boosted colors and then enable nightlight and disable it. That's how you will get the like proper colors. And the smooth display is also enabled for the 120 Hz kind of thing. And the double depth wake is also there. That is working perfectly fine. And inside wallpapers and styles, of course, you can change the wallpapers from here. You can enable the dark theme from here. You can change the upgrade to 4x4 or 5x5. That's it. Now inside security, this is how it looks like in the settings. We have the secure quick setting tiles and we have the power button instantly locks. But there is no quick unlock as of right now. And of course, there is no face unlock, app lock, etc. Those things are simply missing from the security settings as of right now in probably almost all the ROMs of Android 12. One good thing is you get this Oxygenomist dialer over here. So that is great. Let me place a call and show you. We do have the call recording option over here. No problems with the vaulty calling and as you can see there is the record call option so right out of the box you get this call recorder and this oxygen noise dialer is amazing no issues with that almost forgot to tell you the widgets and stuff everything is working fine as you can see this android 12 clock widget is perfectly working even this one as you can see and this is how the animation looks the animations everywhere are very smooth no issues that i have faced and also while video calling or something like that there is a black border which comes on the front camera so you won't be having any kind of light or halo effect once you are video calling on your videos feed and this is how the volume panel looks like actually if you are noticing this looks beautiful and you can have the expanded volume panel just like this now if you are wondering about the overall performance of daily driving and stuff here are the Android Gigman score yes the ram management is decent no problems with the ram management that i have faced this is basically stock android with a little bit customizations so no problems regarding the ram management issues I never faced any kind of random reboots or something like that. But with the Android score, you might be seeing the temperatures didn't actually change. But 
I would say by just touching the device after finishing the Android test, the device actually did not get hot to the touch at all. So maybe the temperatures did not change at all, but for some reason, I think the temperature should be changing like two to three degrees. And from the screen, you can also notice the Geekbench and the CPU stress test. So yeah, overall, I would say the performance of this particular ROM was amazing. I have had no issues whatsoever on this particular build. It does not feel like an unofficial build, except for some apps does not work like the M41 app. So thank you so much for watching this video guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.